In this video, I'm going to show you the advanced search 2.0 in Shopware. The advanced search is available to you as of a Shopware Evolve plan. And to use the advanced search, you need to install the commercial extension. One of the requirements for the advanced search is that you have an open search instant already up and running and operational. If you still need to learn how to integrate this into Shopware 6, then you can best look at our developer documentation as we have an article for this. Additionally, as also already mentioned beforehand, the commercial extensions needs to be installed and activated. The settings for the advanced search can be found via the normal search settings. So via settings, shop and search. Here you can already see that I've activated the search by enable advanced search. The advanced search can be activated or deactivated for each individual sales channel via the sales channel option and then deactivating it via this button. In the first section of the settings, you can select the search behavior. So if you want the end search or the or search, and you can also define the minimal search term length. So the point as of which the search actually looks for some results. Beneath, we have the searchable content settings where we have the general tab and the custom fields tab. So the general tab are entities that are already part of Shopware where you can select if they are, should be searchable, what the ranking score should be. So the higher the score, the more points are rewarded to this entity. And if the split search terms option, if the search terms can be split in this case. For each entity, you can also press on the context menu and then edit it via this or reset the ranking so that it's back to the default settings. If you've changed a lot, you can also reset the def to default via just this button and you can select different entities that should be searched. So right now we have the product settings open you can also search for the categories and the manufacturers. So here you can see that different entities are part of the category entity. Then we also have the, as already mentioned, custom fields, where we can also add custom fields that I've created, either for the products, categories or manufacturers. And then you will need to click add searchable content and afterwards you will double click into this field where you can then select the custom fields that you have created. In my case, I don't have one yet, so there's no results. And for the custom fields, you can generate the same or you have the same options as the normal entities. So if it's searchable, the ranking score, and if they should split so the search terms. After you have created the or added the custom field to your search, you can just confirm the settings by saving via this button. Beneath the searchable contents settings, we also have the search result settings where you can define the number of search results displayed to the buyers in the front end during either the quick search or the results page. So on the left side, we have the settings for the quick search where you can define how many products, categories or manufacturers are shown in the search module. So directly in the front end before clicking enter. And on the right side, the results page. So if you actually look for something and you, for example, didn't find it in the quick search and you press enter, the search is completely filled out and you get to the result page where you can also define how many products. The default is show all results so that all products that fit to this search term are shown and not a defined amount and categories and manufacturers can be set as well. Now let's move back to the next tab and go into the boosting sections. So now we made some changes, so we will have to save it first of all. And with the boostings, you can prioritize products, manufacturers or categories during the search. To add a new boosting, all you have to do is press add boosting. Now a new window will pop up where you can first of all give it a name. For example, if you already know what products should be boosted with this boost, you can name it after the products. Then there is the relevance field 
So this relevance is added to the already existing relevance of the products in the normal search. So the site you, on this tab you defined beforehand. And therefore this relevance is added on top and therefore the boosting is created. Then you can either activate or deactivate the boosting. And if you only want the boosting to be available for a special amount of time. So for example, there's a sale of products and these products should be boosted. You can set the time frame from when to when this boosting should be active. Next, you will be asked for the stream type. So there are two types, either the dynamic product group where products are defined that should be boosted or an entity. So the entities are the categories and manufacturers. And in case you want to boost one of these entities, you can select them and then create the rule directly in the boost. With the dynamic product group, you get the stream and we'll have to add the dynamic product group that you want to boost. Let's now move on to the next tab, actions. Here you can forward customers to either example, a product category or just an URL that you've defined. So to add an action, you just have to press add action. Here you have to define a name once again, activate or deactivate the action, and then add the search terms. So in this example, I'm just gonna use shopware for example. So my customers are searching for shopware a lot and I want to forward them to somewhere else instead of the actual results page. Then I can also set a time frame from when to when this should be active, for example. And now the question is forward to, so I can select a destination. So either I can select a URL. So for example, if I want to forward the customers to the site of Shopware, so shopware.com, or I can select a category. So this category is part of my actual shop. So if I have a blog category, for example, where I only have content about shopware, I can redirect them there. Or even if I created a listing page for shopware, I can redirect them there directly. And also possible is the product. So if I have a product that fits the term, for example, I can select one of my products that I have in my shop and redirect the customer there directly with the search term. Moving on to the synonyms. In search, the use of the term synonymous usually refers to the function of search engines or search tools to display alternative terms or expressions that have a similar meaning to the search term. This feature helps you refine the search results by presenting them with similar terms or variations that may be relevant as well. So for example, if a customer searches for car, a search engine could potentially display synonyms such as vehicle or motor vehicle to provide the user with additional options. This therefore makes it easier to find relevant information and expands the scope of search results. To create a synonym, you will have to click on add synonym rule. Here you are now once again faced with a new window or pop-up where first of all, you can select the synonym rule. So there's the equivalence. So define search terms that are equivalent. So for example, if the term is Wi-Fi, an equivalent could be WLAN, so in German, for example, or wireless network, and these would be equivalent. You can then add these terms. So if I add Wi-Fi and WLAN, for example, these terms will then be added to a synonym group. The other option is the explicit mapping. So here, different terms will be added to a group of synonyms. So for example, a term as an iPhone or smartphone or even Android are not equivalent, but could be the same as in a smartphone and you want the search to find all smartphones. So here you can add the search terms once again. So for example, iPhone and Android, and then enter the synonym where it should be matched to. So in this case, 
smartphone. The final option here is then the language. So for example, if this only fits the English language, you would want to choose English, or if it's only German, German. Alternatively, obviously, the normal setting already is all languages, and this would be possible as well. So it is defined for all languages. Last but not least, we have the preview in the administration. So here you can test the search. So entering your search term, for example, in my case, main, as I have multiple products that fit this, where I can now see the search results and the ranking score. I also have the option to choose the language and the entity that I want to search. So product, category, or manufacturer. So for a category, for example, I could be looking for the clothing. And here I can find the category or the manufacturer. I could be looking for shopware. And here I can see the results and the ranking score once again. I have now moved into the storefront to actually check out the search via the actual search bar. So in this case, I will search for main again, as in the preview I already mentioned. And here I can find the same products and I can also find the suggestion. Or if I search for shopware, for example, I will find products that have the manufacturer shopware, I can find the suggestions and the manufacturers that have the name.